let me talk to you about the different number sets in mathematics. As I talk to you about number sets such as natural numbers, counting numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, imaginary numbers, and complex numbers, I'll use this number line to help illustrate to you the differences between these sets of numbers. Let's start by talking about the natural numbers. The symbol for natural numbers is an N. And natural numbers refer to one of two things. It's actually a little bit ambiguous as to which of the two it refers to, but it could refer to the counting numbers, which are literally the numbers you count with. So for example, one, two, three, four, and so on. On this number line I've drawn here, I'm going to label some counting numbers. But natural numbers don't necessarily only include the counting numbers, sometimes they also include zero. And if we include zero as part of natural numbers, often those are referred to not as counting numbers because you can't count to zero, but they're just referred to as whole numbers. So those are all the counting numbers and zero. So when we're talking about natural numbers, we're talking about all of the positive whole numbers and possibly zero. There's debate around whether zero is included as part of the natural number set or not, but if you use the terminology whole number, it's assumed that zero is included. Now what if we include some negative whole numbers on our number scale? That would introduce the number set called integers. The symbol for integers is a Z. Integers are positive or negative whole numbers. So that set would look something like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and so on. It's important to note that zero is included in the set of integers. So let me label some of the negative whole numbers on my number line so that we have integer values from negative seven to seven. What we're gonna move on to next are the differences between real numbers and imaginary numbers. And after we understand the difference between those two, we will further subdivide real numbers into two categories. Real numbers could be things called rational numbers or irrational numbers. So let's talk about real numbers first. The symbol for real numbers is an R. And real numbers are basically any number that could fall anywhere on a number line. Now, those numbers that fall somewhere on a number line, those could be rational numbers or irrational numbers. So what's the difference between those two things? Well, rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a ratio, or another word for ratio is fraction, of integers. And remember, integers are all the numbers you see labeled on that number line. To make sure you fully understand rational numbers, let me list a few examples of rational numbers, and then we'll plot a couple of them on the number line. Examples of rational numbers could be one over three, seven over 10, negative four, nine, negative nine over four, and so on. All of those numbers are expressed as a ratio of integers. Now, the integers like negative four and nine, those can be expressed as being over one if you wanna think of them as fractions. So those count as rational numbers as well. Let's plot a couple of these on our number line. Where would one over three fall? One over three would fall about right here. I'll label that point right there as a third. And I'll also plot negative nine over four. If we think of that as a decimal, that's negative 2.25, that would be about right here. I'll label that as negative nine over four. So if rational numbers can be expressed as a fraction of integers, irrational numbers are numbers that fall on a number line, but can't be expressed as a fraction of integers. Let me give you a couple of examples of numbers that fall on a number line that cannot be expressed as a fraction of integers. There are some really famous ones that you're probably familiar with, Pi is an example of one. Pi is about 3.14159 and so on. The decimal keeps going forever and it keeps going infinitely in a way that it can't be expressed as a fraction of integers. On a number line, pi would be about right here. Another famous irrational number is Euler's number. The symbol E is used for that. And that's approximately 2.718. So that would fall around here. And another type of irrational number would be the square root of a positive number that's not a perfect square number. So for example, the square root of two. 
the square root of 2 is about 1.41, so that would land us about here. So all of those rational, the orange numbers, and irrational, the green numbers, do fall on the number line, which make them real numbers. What about imaginary numbers? Imaginary numbers, first of all, um, would have no place on a number line. So what are they? What type of number has no place on a number line? They are numbers that when you square them, you get a negative result. Now you may be thinking, how can you square something and get a negative result? You've probably been taught all through your math career that when you square something, it has to be positive, right? For example, three squared is positive nine and negative three squared is also positive nine because squaring something means multiplying it by itself. And no matter whether your base is positive or negative, you're either doing a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative, either result is positive. So how do we get a negative result when we square something? Well, let me give you an example of something we can square to get a negative result. What if we were to square the square root of a negative number, like for example, negative one? Squaring and square rooting are inverse operations of each other, so they cancel out. So the square root of negative one squared is negative one. So for that reason, an example of an imaginary number is the square root of negative one. And there's a symbol that's used for this very specific example. The symbol for the square root of negative one is often deemed i. I could write another imaginary number. So for example, the square root of negative three. How we would normally simplify that? We would rewrite the square root of negative three as a product of the square root of negative one and the square root of three. And then the symbol for the square root of negative one is i. So the square root of negative three is i root three. So there's some examples of what some imaginary numbers look like. And you might be thinking, what are these useful for? Well, they do have some applications. When we start adding some real numbers to them, we get things called complex numbers. So complex numbers are the combination of real numbers and imaginary numbers. And an example of what that would look like would be something like three plus the square root of negative five. That's an example of a real number plus an imaginary number. So we say that's a complex number. So why do we have these complex numbers which have imaginary numbers within them? They do have some applications in some practical fields of math and science, including things dealing with like electricity, um, quantum mechanics, and sound. So let me just zoom out so you can see this whole breakdown of these number sets that you should be familiar with. And I realized I forgot to add some of the symbols for these number sets. The letter used for rational numbers is Q. The letter used for irrational numbers is P. The letter for imaginary numbers is I. And the letter for complex numbers is C. So take a good look at that breakdown and hopefully you now understand all the different sets of numbers and how they're related to each other.